brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to St. George's Church online service. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today is Trinity Sunday. If you are with us for the first time, we welcome you and hope that you will be blessed by our service. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for bringing us here today, this morning, as one family under this online platform to give glory to you. We commit this time unto your hands. We pray, O oh Lord, that you bless each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The introductory sentence, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. John chapter 14, verse 6 to 7. Let us now sing the opening hymn. Confession. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Brothers and sisters, the scriptures urge us to acknowledge our many sins and not to conceal them in the presence of God, our Heavenly Father but to confess them with a pertinent and an obedient heart, so that we may be forgiven through his boundless goodness and mercy. Let us therefore draw near to the throne of our gracious God, through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, and confess our sins together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbours in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that's past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray the Collects together, the Collect for Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversaries through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for the Week after Pentecost. O Lord, from whom all good things come, grant to us, your humble servants, that by your holy inspiration we may think those things that are good, and by your merciful guiding, may perform the same through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Collect for preparing to hear God's word. Gracious Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Help us so to hear them, read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them that encouraged and supported by your holy word we may embrace and always hold fast the joyful hope of everlasting life which you have given us in our savior jesus christ amen we will now have the old testament reading The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among the people of unclean lips." and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 29. Let us read this responsively. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. 
The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare, and in his temple cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We will now have the New Testament reading. The reading is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 12 to 17. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the mystics of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now we are children. Then we are heirs, heirs of God and co heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in His sufferings, in order that we may also share in His glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel. The gospel is taken from John chapter 14 from verse 1 to 26. And all say together, Glory to Christ our Saviour. Verse 1, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than this, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. This is the Gospel of Christ. Together, praise to Christ our Lord. Well, good morning, brothers and sisters, and I uh, hope you are taking uh, good care at home during this MCO. Today is Trinity Sunday, and our sermon this morning is Believing in the Triune God. Now let me lead us in prayer, and then we'll look at God's Word together. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for revealing yourself to us through your Son. We pray now that by your Holy Spirit, 
You would help us to know you better. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, whenever I share the gospel with a non-Christian, there is one question that they inevitably ask. Is Jesus God? Now, the question comes because we say that Jesus is the perfect man who died upon the cross for our sins. And yet we also say that Jesus was the Son of God, and we must follow him as our Lord. And so the question inevitably comes, is Jesus God? Should I follow Jesus or should I follow God? Should I pray to Jesus or should I pray to God? Or, or should I pray to the Holy Spirit for, for that matter? Are there three gods? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? Or is there only one God? These are all questions about the Trinity. I wonder if you were asked them, whether you would know how to answer them. Well, today is Trinity Sunday. It's the time of the year when we stop and consider what it means that God is Trinity. Three persons, but one God. And a great place for us to learn about the Trinity is John chapter 14, our Gospel reading this morning. Well, the first point this morning is that the Son is the only way to the Father. The Son is the only way to the Father. In John 14 verse 1, Jesus makes a divine claim. Look at verse 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Now, with that statement, Jesus makes himself equal with God. Now, if Jesus was not God, to, to command us to believe in him in the same way we believe in God, well, that would be blasphemous, wouldn't it? God doesn't share his glory with other people. But, verse 2, we see yet another divine claim. Verse 2, Jesus says, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Notice in those verses, Jesus calls God his Father. And that also is a claim to divinity. Uh, back in John chapter 6, verse 18, we read this. This was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own Father, making himself equal with God. See, uh, heaven is, is God's house. God is the one who rules heaven. God is the one who decides who goes to heaven. But here Jesus claims that heaven is his Father's house and he can reserve a place in heaven for us. He will come and bring us there. It's a divine claim. Now, Jesus' divinity is emphasized all throughout John's Gospel. The Gospel begins, of course, John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, the Gospel will end with Thomas declaring to the risen Jesus, You are my Lord and my God. And throughout the Gospel, Jesus will use God's divine name, uh, I am. He will say in chapter 8, verse 58, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. He says, I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. All these are divine claims. We should be in no doubt. Jesus is the eternal Son of God. He is God in human flesh. And that means that Jesus is the only way to the Father. Jesus is the only way to the Father. Look at verse 5. Uh, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now notice Jesus doesn't say here that he is one way to the Father. You know, one of many possible alternatives. He says, I am the way, I am the only way to have a relationship with the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's saying, if you want to go to heaven, if you, if you want to know God truly, if you want to receive eternal life, there's only one way, and that is through him. Not through another religion, not through your own good works 
only through Jesus. Now, why is that? Why is only Jesus the way, the truth, and the life? Well, it's because only Jesus is fully God and fully man. Now, because only Jesus is God in human flesh, only Jesus is fully qualified to offer that perfect sacrifice for us on the cross. If he's only a man, he can only die for one person. And if he's only God, then he can't represent us. He can't die in our place. But Jesus is fully God and he's fully men, so he's fully qualified to die for us on the cross. And therefore, only Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Only Jesus can make us God known to us. Only Jesus can give us eternal life. Only Jesus can bring us to heaven with the Father. Now, the implications of all this are massive, aren't they? Without faith in Jesus, people will be eternally lost. We must believe Jesus is God because it's only through him we can be saved and have a relationship with God the Father. I find often at funerals people uh, tend to speak in very fuzzy terms. He's in a better place. Her suffering is over. And people will say those kind of things even if they're not Christians. They might say, look, he was so sincere. She was so religious. He did so many good things. And all those statements may be true of the person. They may have indeed been very sincere and religious and, and done many good things. But Jesus says only he is the divine son of God. And so only he can bring us to the Father. No one comes to the Father except through him. We must believe not only in God, we must believe in him if we are to be having a place in heaven with God. Point one, the Son is the only way to the Father. Well, point two, we see that the Son is the only way to know the Father. The Son is the only way to know the Father. Uh, if you've ever seen my children, you'll know that they are the splitting image of me. Much to my wife's frustration, a complete stranger can look at my children and know that I am the Father. In verse 7, Jesus explains that it's just like that with him and the Father. Knowing Jesus... Verse 7 means knowing the Father. Seeing Jesus means seeing the Father. Jesus, the Son, perfectly reveals the Father. At verse 8, Jesus, uh, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it's enough for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and you still do not know, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? You see what Jesus is saying there? If we want to know God, we need to look at Jesus. But Jesus' words are the Father's words. Jesus' works are the Father's works. Jesus' character is the Father's character. Jesus' glory was the Father's glory. And so as you see Jesus, and only as you see Jesus, you see God. Many people believe in a God, but the true God, the God who made and rules this universe, he has chosen to reveal himself in his son Jesus Christ so that it's only through him that we can know the Father. John chapter 1 verse 18 we read, No one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. We, 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 can't, we can't see God. We can't know him apart from God coming into this world in the person of Jesus and revealing himself. So if we want to know God, we must look at Jesus. Jesus alone is God in human flesh. Jesus alone has come from heaven to make God known. So much of religion is about people thinking about what they, uh, they want God to be like. People construct God in the image of man. They, they make a God that they like to believe in. But Christians believe God came down. God entered our world. We don't need to search for him and we certainly don't make him up. He has made himself known. 
So how can I know that God exists if I can't see him? Look at Jesus. How can I know what God is like? Look at Jesus. How can I have a relationship with God the Father? Come to Jesus. And can I know God apart from Jesus? No, I cannot. See, God is not the God that I hope he will be or who I want him to be or who I'm told that he is. God is who he has revealed himself to be. And he has revealed himself in his son, Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus goes on in verse 10. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Now, when a woman becomes pregnant, she is, she's indwelt with a baby. The, the baby is in the mother's womb. So that where the, baby go, where the mother goes, uh, the baby goes as well. The baby eats what the mother eats, and so on. Whatever the mother does, the baby does too. And here we see something even more amazing with God. We see the idea of mutual indwelling. The Father is in the Son, but the Son is also in the Father as well. The Father and the Son, you see, not just united in words and in actions. They are united in their very being. So that as the Son speaks, the Father is doing his works. As Jesus performs signs, you see the Father's glory. As Jesus carries out his Father's will, you see the Father's work. And, 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 and it is this idea of mutual indwelling, which means that Christians believe in, in one God, but three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons, three distinct persons, but only one God. Because the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they are, they're so intimately related to one another in this relationship of mutual indwelling. As they share the divine essence, they are three distinct persons but perfectly united as one God. And what all this means is that the Father, he reveals himself through the Son, he's known through the Son, he is glorified through the Son. The Father and the Son are linked in this unique and intimate way. Now we don't have time to talk about the greater works of verse 12. Uh, those greater works, I think, are about bringing people from spiritual death to spiritual life through the gospel. It's not so much about uh, healings or these kind of things. You can look at John chapter 5, verses 20 to 21, if you want to confirm that. What I want to focus on here is the other person-centered nature of the Trinity. Here we see how the Son glorifies the Father. And the Father is glorified in the Son, and the Spirit is glorified as he brings people to the Father through the Son. Look at what Jesus says in verse 13. He says, Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do it, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. It's a remarkable verse, isn't it? As we pray to the Father, Jesus answers our prayers. And we're told he does that, for the glory of his Father. The Father is glorified in the Son. Uh, a few weeks ago we saw the same theme in John chapter 17. Remember John chapter 17 verse 1. Jesus prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. In these verses and others we see the other person-centered nature of the Trinity. The Father loves the Son and, and seeks to glorify Him and exalt Him. And the Son loves the Father and seeks to glorify Him and obey His will. So that as Jesus is glorified as our Saviour and King, the Father who sent Him is, is glorified as well. And, and so the way that, that we glorify the Father is by serving the Son. And as we glorify Jesus, we also glorify the Father who sent Him. 
Now, all this is why uh, John can say in, in 1 John 4, 4 verse 10 that God is love. It is because for all eternity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they have existed in this perfect, loving relationship, this other person-centered love. God is love. And what that means is that if we truly know the Trinitarian God, then we will live in love like God does. We will be other person-centered. We will reflect his image. Remember what John writes in 1 John 14? Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. If we know God, the God who is love, we will not live for self and we will not live for stuff. We will live to serve because that is what the triune God is like. Father, Son and Spirit, they love and serve one another in eternity in this relationship of mutual indwelling. So if you know God, it's worth asking this morning, does it show in your life? How are you being other person centered as a spouse, as a parent, as a worker, as a neighbor, as a congregation member, as a citizen? It's worth reflecting this week. How does your knowledge of the God who is love show in your life? Well, so far we've focused mainly on this Father and the Son. We've seen that the Son is divine. He reveals the Father. He glorifies the Father. He's the only way to the Father. Now in verses 15 and 26, let us focus our attention on the Holy Spirit. And we must understand that, that not only is the Son divine, but the Holy Spirit is divine too. Uh, uh, last week, uh, Bishop uh, uh, Andrew Pung mentioned that sometimes people talk about the Holy Spirit as an it, as if it was some impersonal power, you know, maybe a little bit like Star Wars, I guess. May the force be with you. Uh, and he explained so well that the, the Holy Spirit's not a force. He is a person. He is the third person of the Trinity. And that's why in this uh, passage, John 14, the Holy Spirit is called he and not it. I look at verse 15. Uh, if you love me, Jesus says, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. We're told in verse 17, we will know the spirit, but you cannot know an it, can you? I mean, you cannot have a personal relationship with a spoon or with a clock or with a car. Now, sometimes you wonder if people do try to have relationships with their cars, don't they? But you, but you can know the Spirit, can't you? The Spirit is a person. And throughout the Scriptures, he's described in personal terms. In verse 26, we'll read that the Spirit teaches the disciples. Elsewhere, the Spirit gives gifts to his people. The Spirit has emotions. He can be grieved. The Spirit can be lied to. All those things are only things that a person can do. The Holy Spirit is a person, the third person of the Trinity. And in this passage, we also see what the Holy Spirit does. Verse 16 says, he proceeds from the Father and the Son. Uh, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Now, notice how in this uh, verse 16, even though the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're, they're all equally divine, there is still an ordering in the Trinity. The Father sends the Son. The Son glorifies the Father. The Father and the Son send the Holy Spirit. He proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Father, Son, and Spirit, they're all equal in status. They're all equally divine, but they are different persons with different roles. And the role of the Spirit here is to be our helper, to be our advocate, to, to, to dwell within us. At verse 18, uh, we read, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, 
and I in you. We were reminded last week that uh, we don't walk alone. The Holy Spirit lives within us. He, he changes our hearts. He, he gives us faith. He, he transforms our lives. And here is another wonderful promise. As Christians, we're not abandoned by our Heavenly Father. We're not orphans. We're not abandoned by His Son as He ascends to heaven. The Father and the Son come to dwell in us by the Holy Spirit. Look at the end of verse 23. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Now that again is another remarkable thought, isn't it? In the Old Testament, God dwelt in the temple. And he was so glorious that no one could approach his glorious presence. But here we're told, if we are Christians, then God the Father and God the Son, they dwell in us. They've taken up residence in our heart by the Holy Spirit. And that means, of course, that we, we cannot be any closer to God than we are right now. Now, sometimes we might feel far from God when we sin or when we're going through a time of suffering, but, but in reality, we're, we're not far from God. If we are a Christian, the holy God, the, the triune God, he dwells in our hearts. He couldn't be any closer to us. He will never leave us or forsake us, no matter what. In fact, verse 20 tells us that, that we can experience that that same union with Christ that, that he experiences with his Father. Verse 20, in that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. And such is our intimacy with God. Through the Holy Spirit, we are united with Jesus, and so we are also united with the Father as well. We too experience that, that mutual indwelling. And the Spirit achieves all this through God's Word. Verse 17 says he's the Spirit of truth. Verse 26 says he, he brings to remembrance all that Jesus says. The Spirit works through the Word of God, pointing us to Jesus, bringing us to faith in Jesus, so that as we come to Jesus and believe in him, we come to know the Father, and we are united to him by faith. Well, I know we've uh, covered quite a lot of ground there, and the Trinity is never easy to get our minds around, but let's just sum up what we've seen here. We've seen that the God of the Bible is triune. He's one God in three persons. And we've seen that God the Father is God, God the Son is God, and God the Holy Spirit is God, and yet there are not three gods, there's only one God. For these three mutually indwell one another in this perfect, loving relationship. And we've seen today that, that we can experience the same kind of close, intimate, personal relationship with the triune God as the Father and Son dwell in us by the Holy Spirit. Now, I think this is where Christianity is so different from every other religion, not just in the belief in a triune God, but in the character of that God. See, in every other religion, God is distant and God is fearful. He's not someone that you have a, a personal relationship with, like a, like a loving father. He's someone you try to appease. He's someone you try to not get on his bad side, not to get angry. But in Christianity, we call God Father. We know that Jesus will never leave us or forsake us. We know that the Holy Spirit dwells in our heart. Indeed, the Father and the Son have come to dwell in our heart by the Spirit. We know the Spirit is changing us from within so that we truly love God and experience that close, personal, intimate, loving relationship that the Father, Son and Spirit have enjoyed for all eternity. The God of the Bible is personal. And we can have a personal relationship with him. We can know the Father through the Son by the Holy Spirit. Now, I think the fact that God is triune, three persons in eternal relationship, it, it reminds us that 
Relationships is what life is all about. Life is not about stuff. Life is not about success. Life is not about just getting jobs done. Life is about loving relationship. And so this theology, this uh, knowledge of the triune God, it's, it's immensely practical. If we've truly understood the nature of God, the triune nature of God, we will prize relationships in our life. We will prize our relationships with him, our relationships with one another. We will seek to live in other person-centered love. It's immensely practical. So we've seen that there is one God, three persons. So we've also seen that those three persons have three different roles. Uh, they're all equally God, but they have different roles to play. He says, as people made in God's image, we see that same kind of uh, unity and diversity in our human relationships. We're all equally human. We're all equally valued to God. Um, but God has made us male and female and has given us different roles to play. Uh, we see that expressed in marriage, don't we? The, the husband is to lead and lay down his life for his wife. The, the wife is to honour and submit to the husband as, as the head. They're both equally married. They're both equally valuable. But they have these different roles to play. And we see it expressed in the church as well. We're, we're all one body in Christ. But we're very diverse, aren't we? Different races, different languages, different ages, different gifts. We're equally valuable, we're equally important, but we're all different, and we've all got different roles to play. And so as we grasp this knowledge of the triune God, who's, who's one God in three persons, then we will learn to reflect his nature in, in how we live, as we embrace our different roles as men and women. And as we use our different gifts to love and serve one another. Well, as we conclude, let me ask this question. Do you know this God? Do you know this God who is Trinity? Because he is the only true God. And if you do, if by the Spirit you have believed in the Son and have come to know the Father, then you can look forward to an eternity in the Father's house, in heaven itself, with the Father, with Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in eternal glory. We will know, we will know him. We will love him forever. We will share in his love. Now, and this, if this morning you're tuning in and you have not yet believed in Christ, then understand this. There is no other way to salvation than to believe in the Christian God, the triune God. Is Jesus God? Yes, he is. And it is absolutely essential that you come to believe that and live in the light of it. Jesus is the only way to the Father. Jesus is the only way to know the Father. And it's only by the Spirit's work that we will ever come to recognize Jesus as our Lord and God as our Father and so, be, and so be saved. And so will you believe in God and believe also in Jesus by the Holy Spirit? Will you believe in the triune God? Let's pray. We praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, one God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can have a relationship with you through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that he took on human flesh, dying on the cross, so that we might have a place in your house in heaven. We thank you that you've poured out your spirit upon us, that we, we may indeed recognize you as our Lord and that we may recognize God as our Father. Father, by your spirit, would you help us to know you better? 
Help us to love you. Help us to serve your Son and so glorify you. And Lord, help us to show our love for you in how we treat other people. Help us to be other person-centred, to be full of love like you are, to use our varied gifts, our varied roles for the good of others. And so we pray, Heavenly Father, that we would bring glory to you as we serve your Son by the Holy Spirit. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
believe in life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the say together the Athanasian Creed and it is one of the official creeds that we believe as uh, as Christians in the Anglican Church and Christians have believed uh, for uh, all millennia and uh, we don't say it very often usually we say the Apostles Creed or we say the Nicene Creed uh, mainly because uh, they're much shorter but the Athanasian Creed it expresses uh, really fully and completely what we believe as Christians about the Trinity and also what we believe about Jesus, him being fully God and fully man. Uh, and so it'll take us a little while to say it together, but I hope you'll find it uh, rich and encouraging as we consider the essential beliefs that we have uh, in the triune God. Uh, the creed opens by saying, whoever will be saved, uh, they must believe these things. So if you're not yet a believer, then also pay close attention uh, to what we believe as Christians, because these are the this is the God we believe in, and, and we must believe in this God uh, if we are to be saved. Well, let's say the Athanasian Creed together. Let us read the Athanasian Creed together. Whosoever will be saved before all things, it is necessary that he hold the Catholic faith, which faith except everyone do keep hold and undefiled. Without doubt, he shall perish everlastingly. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity, and in Trinity, in unity, neither confounding the persons nor dividing the substance. For there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Ghost. But the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Ghost is all one. The glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Ghost. The Father uncreate, the Son uncreate, and the Holy Ghost uncreate. The Father incomprehensible, the Son incomprehensible, and the Holy Ghost incomprehensible. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, and the Holy Ghost eternal. And yet they are not three eternals, but one eternal. As they are not three uncreated, nor three incomprehensibles, but one uncreate, uncreated and one incomprehensible. So likewise, the Father is almighty, the Son is almighty, and the Holy Ghost almighty. Yet they are not three almighties, but one almighty. So the Father is God, 
the Son is God and the Holy Ghost is God. And yet, they are not three gods, but one God. So likewise, the Father is Lord, the Son Lord, and the Holy Ghost Lord. And yet, not three lords, but one Lord. For like as we are compelled by the Christian verified to the knowledge every person by himself to be God and Lord, so we are forbidden by the Catholic religion to say, there be three gods or three lords. The Father is made of none, neither created nor begotten. The Son is one of the Father alone, not made nor created, but begotten. The Holy Ghost is of the Father and of the Son. Neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. So, there is one Father and not three fathers, one Son and not three sons, one Holy Ghost, not three Holy Ghosts. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another. None is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal together and co-equal, so that in all the things, as is for said, the uni unity of in Trinity and in Trinity in unity is to be worshipped. He, therefore, that will be saved must thus think of the Trinity. Furthermore, it is necessary to everlasting salvation that he also believe faithfully the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the right faith is that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is God and man, God of the substance of the Father, begotten before the worlds, and a man of the substance of his mother, born in the world. Perfect God and perfect man of a reasonable soul and human flesh subsisting, equal to the Father as touching his Godhead, and inferior to the Father as touching his manhood. Who, although he be God and man, yet he is not two, but one Christ. One, not by the conversion of the Godhead into the flesh, but by taking the manhood into God. One together, not by confusion of substance, but by the unity of the person. For the reason soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ. Who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again and third day from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He seated on the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he shall come to judge and quick and the dead at whose coming all men shall rise again with their bodies and shall give the account of their own works and they have done good shall go into life everlasting and they may that have done evil into everlasting fire this is the catholic faith which except a man believe faithfully and firmly he cannot be saved Let us bow our head in prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We commit to you the nations of the world and our own nation. We pray for the victims of the recent LRT crash in Kuala Lumpur, for our recovery from their physical injuries and from emotional trauma. We also pray for the wisdom of our governing authorities, Lord, as they seek to cope with the surge of COVID-19 cases worldwide. Pray for a fair, safe and efficient distribution of vaccines locally and globally. We also pray for hospitals, Lord, who are struggling with the influx of patients, especially where ICU units have reached capacity. We pray for the comfort for those who have lost their loved ones as well. We also pray for Christians would be a beacon of hope to our suffering world and be effective witness of Christ. Also pray that Christian suffering in mind, body and spirit may find hope and strength in Christ. Bless and guide our young Dipatuan Agong, Prime Minister and Chief Minister. Give wisdom to all in authority, direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace. That may men may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Also pray for the church in Germany, 
where approximately 64.3% of the population identify as Christians. We pray for the local Christians to seize the opportunity to share the gospel with many migrants coming to the country. We also pray for the establishment of the immigrant churches which reach out cross culturally to migrant communities. We pray the gospel be shared among the 250,000 international students in Germany, which is the third highest in the world today. For our own diocese and province, we pray for our Bishop, Right Reverend Dr. D. Stephen Abaro, as he leads our diocese and works with pastors and leaders to shepherd God's people. We pray for the zeal in sharing the gospel with those around us. We also pray for the boldness to overcome fears of sharing the gospel with those around us as well. For our own area diocese of Northern Peninsula Upper North, we pray for Emmanuel Harvest Center, Sungai Ara Penang. Especially we pray for the priest in charge, Bishop Andrew Pang and his family, the PCC, church members, and all ministries in the parish. We pray, Lord, that the church will continue to grow in your glory, Lord. We also pray for our own church, especially we pray for Bishop Andrew Pang, Right Reverend Dr. Richard Lowe, Reverend Tim Nichols, Reverend Ho Kong Ng, and all of their families. We also pray that all our ministries and auxiliary bodies, Lord, would nurture and disciple people towards maturity in Christ. Thank God for those involved in preparing our online services during this MCO. We also pray for the strength to faithfully prepare services that will edify God's people during this time of trial. We also pray for our youth to grow in knowing Christ through their studies of John's Gospel. We also pray for the strength to adjust to online classes for Sunday School and youth. Strengthen our Archbishop and our Bishops and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who are celebrating their birthdays this week. Especially we pray for Ted Law, Krishna Daniel, and Joshua William. May they continue to remember God's kindness and grow in the knowledge and love of Christ in the year ahead. We also remember those celebrating their wedding anniversaries. Strengthen them to continue loving you and one another and be faithful to the promise they made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who suffer that God will sustain them with the knowledge of his love. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in the body, mind or spirit. Especially we pray for Ovin Vetamani. Give him the courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. Especially we remember Lucy Key. According to your promises, grant with us, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in a perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christians, people, to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, good morning once again, and uh, just a few announcements before we finish the service for today. And uh, let me say a very warm welcome, especially if you're joining us for the very first time today. Uh, perhaps you found us online or you were invited by a regular. It's really great to have you here. We'd love to get to know you. 
Uh, please do subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about future services. Uh, and we do hope at some point we'll be able to meet you uh, in person. Uh, now you will notice that today we are back on a, uh, a pre-recorded service that uh, uh, all the various members have uh, shot their parts from home and then we've produced uh, this, uh, vid this uh, video service for us to watch. We were doing live streaming in the church, but uh, the tighter uh, uh, SOPs, the tighter lock stricter lockdown that has just been implemented means that we're no longer able to, to do that. So for, uh, for the foreseeable future moving forward, uh, we'll continue to have our Sunday services uh, in this way. Now, as we are mainly spending most time at, at home, uh, it's, it is easy to feel isolated. It can be challenging and it is very important that we have relationships with other believers uh, and that we are expressing our, our love for other believers as we serve the God who is love. Uh, and so let me encourage you, if you haven't already, to, to join a small group. We have various uh, small groups that meet to study the Bible through the week. You'll find all the details of them in the bulletin in the service outline. Uh, of course, we have our Sunday school that meets online on Saturdays at 11 a.m. The youth, which meet at 3 p.m. Uh, on Saturdays. The young adults meet Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Uh, there's a challenging lifestyles discipleship group, which meets on Thursdays at 8 p.m. And uh, just a reminder that in, on uh, the coming uh, Tuesday, the uh, what is it, the 1st of June, uh, that we will start our, our women's group Tuesday night at 8 p.m. And uh, we would love you to uh, be involved in one of uh, those, those small groups, meeting with other believers uh, around God's word, praying for each other and uh, encouraging each other on to, to live for the Lord Jesus. Now, if you want to join one of those groups in the, in the bulletin, you'll find a uh, an email address there, you could just email that, say, I want to join a small group, or you could uh, send a message to the Facebook page, or, uh, or, or just talk to another regular if you know one of the members here. We would love you to be part of a, a small group community where we can express our love uh, and, uh, and be growing in Christ uh, together. Uh, now, the other announcement to let you know is that we just had this 11 days, a great time of, uh, of prayer during the Thy Kingdom Come, and uh, we're going to be having... Uh, a semi-regular prayer meeting that uh, uh, we'll be meeting after that and uh, the first uh, meeting we will have for that uh, will be on the 31st uh, of, of May which is tomorrow right 8 p.m. and uh, you can uh, see the, the details uh, on the screen we'll also email it around and, uh, and, and put in our whatsapp group and all of that but it'll be uh, Monday night a chance to come together uh, again to pray with uh, other other believers uh, from St. George's. Uh, there will also be a short reflection from God's Word and, uh, and some songs and so on. So we'd love you to join us for that uh, on the Monday night at 8 p.m. Well, that's all the announcements for today. Thank you again for joining us uh, online, and we look forward to the day that we will be able to meet in person again. But until then, stay safe. We'll sing our final hymn together, I Bind Unto Myself Today. Let's sing together.
we end with the blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.